what the morrow may bring, in shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth for everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith, in Jesus above, trusting confide. Oh, no. 
Too many treasures 
the trials I want in my dreams put me through and the only real peace that I have dear Lord is in you
day when I make up my jewels. Now, if you will, notice Matthew chapter 13, verse 45 and verse 46. Matthew chapter 13. The Bible said again, the kingdom is heaven, is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Let's read it again. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Notice the context of those two verses is the pearl. I want to bring you a message tonight on the pearls and the jewels of God. Lord, I ask you to bless tonight. Bless the message. I pray you'd apply it to every heart. And God, that it'd be a blessing. Lord, it'd be a lodging place in our hearts tonight. It would be even as simple as a fool or a wayfaring man would not err therein. We'd see precious boys and girls and young men and young ladies, mothers and dads, grandmothers and granddads draw close to thee. Lord, save that sinner that's near as hell. Now I pray you'd mend the broken heart, pick up the pieces and put them back together. Let somebody find a refuge, a shelter, hiding place tonight. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible tells us tonight about in that day when I make up my jewels. And the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 13 about the kingdom of heaven like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, and that pearl of great price. Now I want to establish a couple of facts here. On the first thing I want to talk to you about the precious pearl. Now this pearl that's mixed here is not Jesus. It's not the Lord Jesus. This pearl has a beginning. Jesus has no beginning or no end. This pearl is created by Jesus, the Creator. This pearl in this parable was bought with a price. Jesus could never be bought with a price. And all the silver and gold and copper of this world could never buy you a split second in heaven, beloved. But I want to show you three things about these pearls and these gems and these jewels tonight. In any kind of jewelry business or any kind of pearl business, there's a finding and a mining and a shining that goes to jewelry. And let me show you something about the finding of the pearls or the jewels. The pearl, if it's not Jesus here in this chapter, the pearls must imitate or the pearls must simulate or the pearls must guide and show us and represent the souls of men tonight. The pearls represent the soul of man in several different ways. First of all, the pearls have a humble origin. I mean, their beginning is very simple. It's not hard. It's not some great thing that can't be understood. But a pearl has a humble beginning. It's a simple. It's one child can understand it. The pearl comes from a humble origin. It comes from the bottom of the sea. It comes from a place where unclean fish are. Isn't that kind of the way our beginning is? We're born, shaped in iniquity. Our lives was born in sin. Our mother I conceive us and bring us in this world. We have kind of a humble origin, wouldn't you say? Not only that, the pearls are products of a wound. When the shell's been broken or wounded, a grain of sand enters into that shell. And by that wound, and by that brokenness of that shell, that grain of sand enters into that shell. And when it does, that shell begins a process, a crying period of time. That shell will have a weeping moisture to it. And when that shell begins to weep and wet and moisturize itself, what it does is that 
that moisture, that liquid substance, it covers that grain of sand. And within during that process of time, that liquid covers it and covers it, and it gradually it forms itself into a pearl. One day, almost two thousand years ago, on Calvary Street, there was a man wounded. That side was opened up, and out of that flow, beloved, it covered the soul of man. And by that covering, and by that atonement, the soul becomes a precious pearl. I like something else about that pearl. It's formed in secret. I like that. Nobody can see what's going on in the shell when the pearl's being born. It's not a secret. Nobody can see it. And nobody understands it. That's the way God is when He changes your life, when He saves your soul. And nobody can see it. Nobody understands it. But you and God know that something's happened. That's exactly the way it is with a pearl. And I like this. The hand of man has nothing to do with shaping a pearl. The hand of man has nothing to do with it. Listen, beloved, as I studied this today and prepared to preach tonight, I thought about how that people wrote me off 12 years ago. The law wrote me off and said he's hopeless, he's helpless. My daddy said I've gone far as I can go with him. My mother said I'll pray. But I'm almost at the point of breaking up and giving up. I don't know what to do with him. But oh, one night 12 years ago, at an old town revival meeting, and the preacher couldn't tell it, and the singers didn't know what was going on. But God reached in my soul and arrested my heart and saved me and made a pearl out of my life. Oh, hallelujah. That's enough to make you city folk want to shout. And a man has nothing to do with it. I like this. The pearl has a glorious future. The pearl has a glorious future. The pearl was not born to stay in the sea. The pearl was not born to stay at the bottom of the ocean. But the pearl had a glorious future to be the ring of some prince, to be the decoration of some queen, to be the crown of some king. It has a glorious future, and so does the church of God tonight. We've got a glorious future where God purchases with his own blood, beloved, and the worst is happening here, but the best is yet to come. We've got a glorious future. Listen tonight. I'm a country boy on the way to the city. I remember a while back flying into Los Angeles on Saturday night, around 9 o'clock. I've never seen such a city as my... I've never seen a city as so much statue. As I flew in there that night, the, the light was just miles and miles, as far as you can see, with the lights of that city. It was just, there was just like daylight almost. And the man sitting beside me, he said, Son, have you ever seen anything like this? He was a gambler and a broker there in L.A. And I said, Sir, I've never seen nothing like this. But, brother, just wait till you see my heavenly city. Why so God lands me on the other shore? There'll be no CPL there. There'll be no Florida power in life. There'll be no Alabama power in life. But the Lamb of God will be the Lord of that city. And that day, beloved, God will show us the glorious future that you heard. It's purity, preciousness, pride. Brother, it also represents truth. If there's something down there worth going and looking at you. Just one pearl off the bottom of the deck of the ocean, off that deep floor where I know men have traveled. Just one majestic pearl that can be displayed and approved that it's worth the trip. 
way up in the money and whatever it costs to go and get it. And that brings me to my next subject. When we find out the in the finding of these that they're in darkness, the bottom of the ocean, mines of Africa behold the greatest diamonds that's ever been displayed in the dark, dreary, and dusty, and dry places where man doesn't want to go, where nobody travels through. By I mean men and treasure hunters and merchant men, they found great treasures in those kind of places. Darkness, they're defiled, they're dead. The Bible said he had quickened us, we were dead in our trespasses of sin. So that's the pearl. Could we take a moment or two and look at the merchant? I really like him. Now, that's the finding. Let's look at the mining. The mining of the pearls and the jewels. The merchant man, what would make a man leave his home? Take all his finances. Take all his substances. Take everything he's worked for and labored for and laid on the line and go and go on a journey in search of a pearl or a jewel. What would make a man do that? You know why? The merchant man, the one I'm talking about, his only business, that's the only business he's interested in. He gave all that he had for soul. This merchant man, he left the splendors of heaven. He got up, stepped on, rolled back the curtain of time, stepped on the elevator of eternity, and said, next stop, Mary's womb and a stable in Bethlehem. And there, through that virgin's womb, that merchant man, in the end of this world, beloved. And that should be our priority tonight. Burdenson pricks my heart when I hear me and Major on the mind. We lose our weeping burden for people that died and gone to hell. Brother, we're out of business. God, to break my heart. God, don't never let my eyes drop. I said a while back, I was preaching a message in Texas, and the pastor's wife walked up. She's a kind, godly woman. But she struck my heart. She said, Brother Danny, have you always been a cry baby? Then you I begged God and stayed on my face. And God would let my eyes stay moist. And God would let me weep and cry and beg sons and daughters to not go to hell. We've got too much a hot head and cool heart. Well, we need a cool head and a warm heart, beloved. God knows we need in this world. Be called one of the pearls of God. This merchant man, his only business is souls. This merchant man knows the price. He knows the price. They never slipped up on the Lord. He came and died at Calvary. He knew he was taking sin in his body, but he had never come in. The sinless one became sin for me and you, despising the shame, hating the reproach. But he held his sins, our sins, to the cross of Calvary. He became a dope addict for the dope addict. He became a harlot for the harlot. He became a liar for the liar. He became a thief for the thief. He became a whoremonger for the whoremonger. Why? He knows somewhere in 1986 that some young man would need a savior. He knows that some young would need the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. He knows some mom or some daddy would have to be saved by the grace of God and they'd be guilt and condemnation upon us. But thanks be to God and the Lamb of Calvary, He's paid the price. The ransom's been paid and the merchant man seeking goodly pearls tonight. Not only did he know the price of a soul, but this merchant man I'm talking about, I'll pay it, I'll pay it. This merchant man said, but this merchant man, he enjoyed his whole trip. He delighted in it. I was preaching a while back, looking out west. And I preached that night. I preached about two weeks straight. Now I'm on the side of the rigs. I'd get out. I'd tongue and preach sometimes twice a day. And I'd 
been going almost two weeks, ready to go home in my last serving. The devil just seemed to slip up on me, and he said, Now, let up a little bit tonight. Your last meeting, they done booked you back next year, and everything's been good. About 11 people have got right with God, so just, just let up a little night now and save your voice. I got the full bit that night, really. I was going to kind of teach a little bit. And then as I read my text, Seems like God just breathed on me. He said, preach again, son. With the Lord, I will. The presence of God, he knows me. And he said, boy, preach again. I tell him about my amazing grace. Oh, they, nobody, nobody didn't run these folks off from no church. They were nobody else's church members. They're down their back, dirty and grimy. Two lights cleaned up before we go to straighten this out. Amen. We've got to have a hard transaction before the outside can change, beloved. It's just hard. A pure man which deals with a shiny, emery cloth. He puts that pearl and love in the shine. See what those them and delivers them. But that dealer man, he develops them. He takes them and shines. He's making mistakes. I can't seem to get a handle on them yet. They'll polish you and shine you and prepare you and develop you. But you know what our problem is? Through the judgment seat of Christ, when he discovered us and he delivered us, and I want everything just as good as it could be, when you feel like you're praying on you, it echoes off of that black, dark pit claw.
never have another, another opportunity. We can't promise you tomorrow. Holy Spirit, speak into your heart. This invitation is still open. We want to have another word of prayer. Nobody comes. Let's close the invitation. Our Father, we thank you for the message tonight. Lord, we thank you for the pearl. We thank you for the merchant. Lord, we pray tonight that there may be another one here that needs to get in. We feel in our heart that the Holy Spirit has spoken to that heart. Oh, I pray right now that they'd mind God and be obedient to you. We thank you for this one that's come. Lord, whatever his need is, Lord, we know that you'll take care of it if he'll surrender his heart and life to thee tonight. God, we pray that you just continue in this service now. Your will be done. Deal with these hearts, Lord. We'll praise you and we'll thank you for it. Maybe one here that's been saved, but they're cold and indifferent. Lord, they just need to come and renew their vows to you. Lord, the altar's still open. God, you've extended this invitation just for them. We're going to sing one other verse. You work in their heart. We pray that they do. We appreciate you being here tonight. We do want you to come back and be with us now tomorrow night, Saturday night. You that's here, if you do not have a church home, we'd like for you to come Sunday. If you have a church home, you go to your own church. We appreciate you coming. You're honored guest tonight. We do want you to come back. Now, we're going to be dismissed, but we'll continue to deal with this young man and tell him. Everything's all right. Amen. 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 Remember this young man. That's worth it all, isn't it? What shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall he give in exchange? Oh, there's nothing that's worth you dying and going to hell. I'll sing one other verse.